Okay, and here we go with the back cover off. Let's see how bad it is. I bought a broken, liquid damaged 2018 MacBook Pro. Let's see if I can fix it. Now the story on this MacBook Pro is that it wouldn't turn on one day and so they took it to the Apple Store and the Apple Store said that it was liquid damage on the motherboard. And as anyone knows who has tried to get Apple to repair their stuff, unless it's an easy repair, they just say it's not fixable. So let's get this thing opened up and see if that's true. Now it is important to note that I am not a MacBook Pro technician. I am no Lewis Rossman. I am no Justa Jones. I'm a game console repair technician. So this is definitely gonna be a challenge most likely. But if you've been following me for a while, you know that doesn't matter. Let's see if we can fix it anyways. Also, if you're looking to get into fixing stuff, I don't recommend buying anything that's liquid damaged. Generally, stuff that's liquid damaged is too far gone to actually fix. For whatever reason, those seem to be attractive to me. I don't know why other than I'm just an idiot, but every once in a while I do find one that's fixable. Okay, and here we go with the back cover off. Let's see how bad it is. Okay, um, we got some liquid there. Not bad at all so far. My worry is that most of the liquid damage is gonna be on the other side of the motherboard because most likely they had it open, they probably spilled something and went through the keyboard and onto the motherboard. So the next thing is I need to get this motherboard out so we can have a look at it from the other side. Here's a little bit of a closer look. If you didn't see before, we got some liquid damage there and liquid damage right there. That's all I see on this side of it. As I look at it a little bit more, I'm seeing a little more liquid damage. We've got a little more here, and some right here, and some over here. I may have to even remove some of these uh, covers here to see if there's any liquid damage under any of these chips as well. But I still do need to get this motherboard out. I've never taken a motherboard out, never seen it done, so I know basically nothing about it. I'm gonna look at it a little bit more closely. If I need help, I'll go to ifixit.com and check out one of their guides. Okay, we have the motherboard loose. Let's turn it over and see how it looks. I see liquid damage there, liquid damage there. Let me get you guys zoomed in so you can see a little bit better. So here we go. We've got a bunch of liquid damage all through here and a little bit over here. We also have some down here. But other than that, I don't see too much. I don't actually see anything else. So. So far, I'm somewhat hopeful on this. We might get lucky and maybe get this working. I'm not totally sure. The other problem though is that this top case also probably has liquid damage to it. So, I mean, if that's the case, then as far as I know, I would have to replace the whole top case, but I don't know for sure. Maybe it's something we can salvage. I'm not sure. First things first though, Let's see if we can get this motherboard fixed up. Now, one other thing I do notice is if you look right here, the bunch of corrosion, some black marks right on the case there. So it looks like maybe there is some sort of connection from the motherboard to the case. Obviously that's not a good thing. And that would have been this guy right here. Don't know what that's for, but obviously that's not, not a good thing to have that connected to the case. Sorry, that's not as clear as it could be but that's what I have to work with for now. 
definitely have a lot of corrosion here, but I don't see anything that's obviously bad. This little chip right here definitely could be. Stuff like this worries me too. It's got an obvious mark there. So I'm just going through and loosening this up. And then once I get it all loose, then we'll run a toothbrush with some IPA to get it cleaned up better. Then I'll put it in my ultrasonic cleaner. And here's yet another area. This area definitely does not look good. Just look at all this blackening under this little chip here. That can't be a good thing. And we have some more corrosion over here. So one thing I'll also need to do is get these shields off so then I can clean any corrosion from underneath the shields. And more blackening. That's a look at the corrosion on one side. Now this is the other side of the board. I have a lot of corrosion going on here as well. Now that I know the condition of the motherboard, I can get this in the ultrasonic cleaner and hopefully that's gonna clean it all off real nice. Then we'll look at it and put some power to it and see if number one, if it works, and number two, if it doesn't work, we need to dig into the schematics and see why not. The motherboard is out of the ultrasonic cleaner. It actually cleaned up really well. So my hopes are actually pretty high that this might actually work. Now I said I was gonna take the shields off. I actually didn't take the shields off. Here's why. Each of these shields take a good amount of heat to get off, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that, but I'm not as familiar with MacBook Pro motherboards for getting the shields off. And I didn't want to put too much heat on a component and cause any problems. I also didn't want to cause any of the connectors to melt or anything like that. And since I'm just not quite as good on the MacBook Pros with that, I didn't want to risk it yet. When I get this put back in, I'll see if there's any signs of life. And depending on what happens there, then I may go back and take the shields off and then do another ultrasonic cleaning. So this is one of the areas there was a lot of corrosion. Same with up here, there was a lot up there. You can see those areas are cleaned off nicely. Over in this area, there was also a lot of corrosion, which has been fully cleaned. And then on the other side, there was a good amount of corrosion in here and even some up here. And we had also corrosion down in this area and that has also been completely cleaned. So you can see how well this motherboard turned out. Now I'm gonna put it back in and cross your fingers. Hopefully we get some signs of life. Ah, perfect. Okay, I think I have it together enough to test. I don't know if I need the bottom cover on or not, but I'm gonna try it without and hopefully something will happen. Now I do have to say there was a lot of liquid damage on the motherboard. Some of it looked fairly serious. It's not very realistic that this is just gonna turn on and work normally, but I'm hoping to at least get some signs of life so we know what works and what doesn't and the areas of the motherboard that we need to take a closer look at. So here we go, let's plug it into a charger and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Plugged in, nothing's happening yet. I don't even know where the power button is. I'm assuming that's it. Yeah, we definitely got nothing here. So unfortunately, there's just no signs of life. That might actually be a good thing because we know right where to look. We need to look at the power coming right into the motherboard. So now I gotta get that motherboard back out so we can check for the power input. If you're familiar with Lewis Rossman and his YouTube channel, you know that he does MacBook repairs on camera and shows you how to do them and what to test. So normally he'll start with checking the charge amperage and see what's going in. I wanted to go ahead and check and see if there is any major shorts on the board that I could tell, especially around the parts that were liquid damaged. And I found a few things that are pretty concerning. Let me show you what they are. So most of all of these components right here seem to be connected directly to the GPU. 
And what I found is that most of them are unfortunately shorted out. So for example, if we go here and here, there's a short beak between here and here. Basically, everything on this part of the board is shorted out. Now I've taken this component off as it was fairly corroded and I there were two components down in here that basically look pretty burned out. But unfortunately, even after removing those, all the shorts were still there. I've also removed this chip back here on the other side of the motherboard and unfortunately that didn't solve the shorts either. I thought that maybe some of these shorts could be caused by maybe other various chips on the board, but it seems that all of these components basically don't go and attach to any of these components out here. So what that tells me is that most likely the GPU itself seems to be shorted. Unfortunately, it looks like maybe the water damage and corrosion that caused basically shorted some lines together that shouldn't have been and probably put too much power to the GPU and shorted it out internally. One other thing I did want to note is I did check these chips right here. These chips basically communicate with the charger on the board and let the charger know how many amps and volts are needed. I did check these chips do have the enable voltage, but unfortunately they're not communicating with the charger to put out 20 volts as there's only five volts at the actual USB-C port. At least from what I understand, this means that these chips are likely faulty, but I didn't really want to put money into replacing those when I know that there's major problems over here on the GPU or something else around it. So I didn't replace any of these chips, even though I think that might have been part of the problem. Now these conclusions are based on my limited knowledge of these motherboards. The one great thing about working on a lot of these Apple products is you can actually get schematics for it. If you've watched a lot of my other videos on game console repairs, unfortunately there are no schematics available, so when you diagnose them you can only get so far. With some of these Apple products there are schematics and you do have people like Lewis Rossman and other YouTubers as well showing you exactly what to test and how to test them. So while I'm definitely not a MacBook Pro repair technician, I think that the results I found on this board are fairly conclusive but tell me what you think down in the comments section especially if you work on these boards tell me if there's anything you think I should be checking or anything that you think I missed then the question becomes what do I do with this at least right now unfixable MacBook Pro now the rational person would probably just put it all back together and resell it on YouTube and get most of their money back but I think we all know I'm not rational or else I wouldn't have bought it in the first place so I think what I'm actually gonna do is keep this one here, wait and see what some of the comments are, think about it a little bit more, maybe take another look at the schematics, do a little more testing, but I think this one is probably never gonna be fixable. That all being said, I learned a ton about how these motherboards work, so I'm gonna be keeping my eye out on eBay for another one to see if I can buy that one and repair it on camera. As much as I hate to put out a repair video where I don't actually fix the item I'm trying to fix, I think it's really important to understand that a lot of this stuff, especially liquid damage stuff, you just never know what you're gonna get into and you may be just wasting your money. Technically, I wasted 860 some dollars, but in reality, that money was spent on me learning a very valuable skill that hopefully I can turn around and use to fix another broken MacBook Pro. Let me know in the comment section if you like this video, if there's anything else that I missed that you think I need to test, and I will be sure to do that in a future video if there are any updates worth putting on camera. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a good one.